Now let's look at the space and time complexity. Let's look at the space and time complexity of selection sort. Like this is also very straightforward analysis, right? Look at this. Your J is going to go from zero up to N, right? So which means every item in this loop. So this outer loop that you have here, this outer loop runs N times. Right? If your input size, if the number of elements is n, this outer loop is going to run n times. Right? Now, when j equals to 0, right, how many times would this inner loop run? Right? When j equals to 0, which means you have completely unsorted array. Your whole array is unsorted. So, you will take this element, compare it with the second element, third element, fourth element. So, you will make n minus 1 comparisons you will make n minus 1 comparisons because look at this code look at this code so what are you going to do you're going to take this first element and you're going to compare it with each of the n minus 1 elements in the first iteration so in the first iteration there are n minus 1 comparisons right and how many swaps are there there is only one swap at the end of this iteration at the end of this iteration there is only one swap what is the swap that happens look at this at the end of this i discovered that I discovered that Z1 is the smallest element. So what did I do? As soon as I discovered that 1 is the smallest element, right? As soon as I discovered that 1 is the smallest element, 1 gets swapped with 2, right? As soon as I discovered that 1 gets swapped with 2, right? So there is only one swap operation. When j equals to 0, there is only one swap operation that happens. Now let's look at what happens when j equals to 1. When j equals to 1, there is already one element in the array that is taken care of, right? You are only left with n minus 1 elements, right? Now, you now how many comparisons will happen? There are n minus 2 comparisons that will happen. And at the end of all the comparisons, one swap will happen, right? Suppose, let's assume this is the minimal element in the leftover array. I am going to make only one swap, but n minus 2 comparisons. That's important, right? Similarly, when j equals to 2, I am going to make n minus 3 comparisons and one swap. Right? Whatever the case, right? So if you look at it, what is the total time complex? What is the total time complexity in terms of comparisons and swaps? Okay. So I will make n minus 1 plus n minus 2, so on so forth, up to one number of comparisons and 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus so on. So I have I make n swaps here. I make n swaps and order of n square, order of n square comparisons. Okay. This is the case whether you have the best case or the worst case. Whatever the case is, whether you are sitting with best case or worst case, you will make order of n square comparisons and order of n swaps. Okay, so you can also see this on Wikipedia here very clearly. So it clearly says that whether you have the worst case performance or the best case performance or the average case performance, everything is order of n square comparisons, but only order of n swaps. You might wonder why order of n, why am I focusing so much on order of n swaps? I'll come to that in the next video, right? Even in the best case, it's order of n square comparisons, order of n swaps. Of course, the overall time complexity would be order of n square, right? Obviously. And what about space? I'm not using any new space. So I'm not using any additional space except for the array that I'm given. Right? I'm using just some variables like i. I'm using some simple variables like i, j, i min, etc. Except that I'm not using any additional space. Right? So this is an in-place sorting algorithm. Right? This is an in-place sorting algorithm. It's a comparison sorting algorithm because I'm using comparisons. Right? We'll see what is a non-comparison sorting algorithm a little later. Right? And it has order of n square complexity. Right? It performs very similar to insertion sort, but there are a couple of differences. Right? And my worst case space complexity is order of 1, which is a constant space. Now, the ob obvious question is, why did we even learn about selection sort? Why should I care about selection sort? I already know insertion sort. Why should I care about selection sort in the first place? We'll see that in the next video. Right? But the space and time complexity is very, very straightforward here. The key difference that you have to understand here is that for selection sort, you have order of n square comparisons, but only order of n swaps. Okay, 
the same thing if you look at insertion sort let's look at insertion sort right insertion sort on wikipedia right i'll, I'll show it to you on wikipedia itself so that you're more uh, so that we have the data there right so if you go to insertion sort on wikipedia one thing you'll notice is if you look at the worst case you can have order of n square comparisons and order of n square swaps for insertion sort so i'm on wikipedia page for insertion sort right this is one of the fundamental differences right the fundamental differences between insertion sort for insertion sort right for insertion sort for insertion sort in the worst case in the worst case you have order of n square comparisons and order of n square swaps also right while for selection sort for selection sort you have order of n square comparison certainly in the worst case but you have only order of n swaps now if you notice there is a key difference here here and here i'll tell you why this is important in the next video okay and why this matters that that will also give you an intuition on why we even studied selection sort when we already have insertion sort